Jimmy the Hat Miller. <laughs> the Hat. Jimmy the Hat. It's a reference from an obscure show that I used to watch. It doesn't matter. Jim fucking Miller. Jim him Miller. As he wants to be known. Yeah, Jim fucking. Jim the fucker. Um, what a performance. Oh, he looked great, man. He was so quick. Um, three things that I wanted to point out. His speed, his Muay Thai, and his durability. All of those things were really impressive for someone who's 40 years old at the lightweight. At, at lightweight. And his gray hair looks pretty cool too. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Silver Fox. Yeah, Silver Fox. This guy has been a bit of a journeyman throughout his whole career. Now he's really in the limelight because of his durability and his, his uh, longevity in the sport. Uh, and all props to him. He's, he's pretty fucking cool. I think we all look up to that guy. Yeah. I mean, I was watching him speak in the post-fight press conference and I was just grinning the whole time. Yeah. I just, I admire that guy so much. Same. Um, and for someone who's been around as long as he has, um, fighting professionally since 2005 um, in the UFC since 2008, mm. uh, has the most wins in the UFC, the most fights in the UFC. Just keeps uh, adding to it as well. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And for him to sit there and the and, and, and do interviews, he, he doesn't sound punch drunk. He doesn't sound like a guy who's going to retire and have some problems with his with his brain. Yeah. Um since he's he's still got his wits about him. Definitely. Um <laughs> and it's he he said it it, do, it does come down to luck and genetics, but at the end of the day I'd say there's a, a lot of hard work that goes into that, a lot of uh forward planning and a lot of just taking the right fights and not pushing yourself too much because mm-hmm. that's what we see so many times is people who turn around and continuously fight again and again and again and again like four or five times a year these are the guys who do end up having real problems with their chin mm. they don't prepare mm. properly and they don't take the time after the fights to to wind down and and you know spend time being a human for a little bit opposed to just being a fighter yeah um yeah i know what you mean he's he's obviously very smart and he's he's had very good uh strategic plans in his career and he's, he's you know. built a great team around him <laughs> yeah exactly um, and and that's what any anyone needs in order to to be successful. Mm. So, yeah, the post fight speech that you were saying it was very cool. Uh, that press conference, sorry, it was cool seeing him and Felder have a little bit of a back and forth uh, at the press conference as well. There's so much respect there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. They're both two absolute warriors. Yeah. And that that's the one that I want to see for sure. Oh, at at the end of the day, those two locked in a cage, you just know it's it's going to be violence. Absolutely. Um, and there's going to be like, there's going to be some moments when they look across the cage at each other and faces covered in blood and they'll be laughing. It it, it will just be such a fun fight to watch, man. Yeah. Um, when he was talking about it as well, he was very like, you could tell he wants to do it. Oh, he He wants wants it it. so bad. He wants it hard. And, and like, fair enough too, because he's been, he's been toying with a return for so long now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's in the pool. Oh well, oh, no, he's not he, even a he's, thing anymore. But well, yeah, he he went back in the pool before they yeah, before which they shows did. intention. Um, that shows intention, but I think he has, he has done that a couple of times. Yeah. Um, he's still obviously very involved in the sport, being a oh yeah, being a, a big he's part of shape. the commentary team. He's in shape. He's, he's training. He's doing triathlon. Yeah, he's he so, can walk right back into a fight right now. I'm sure. You know, I'm sure he trains at least a little bit. And if he just you know, like, trained for a full camp. Got the durability, he's got the skills, he's got the warrior spirit. You know, if he wants to do it, let's fucking get it done at 300. And I, I love the way that Jim Miller was approaching this whole UFC 300 thing. He's like, Look, I want to go in there and I want to have a fun fight. I want to have a fight people remember. He's talking about maybe even if Felder doesn't take this fight, moving up to 170 and facing Matt, Matt Brown. Brown. Yeah, that would be the guy with good the most fight. knockouts in, is it? In Walter Waite, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that that would be an incredible matchup too. I mean, we, we've never seen. Have we ever seen Jim Miller at welterweight? Um, I'm. I'd say so. I think so. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'd say probably. Okay. Maybe. That's a tough fight, okay. man. Uh, what go we... in there with Jim with with Matt Brown. He's a knockout artist. He's a lot bigger than than Jim. Him. So you know <laughs> that that's a tough fight. Jim him Miller. They were talking about a catch weight, maybe. I think that was Felder and him were talking about a catch weight, one sixty five. 
Uh, we all know Dana doesn't love catch weights. That's why they don't. We don't see them that often. But oh, uh, but yeah. UFC three hundred, yeah. two guys who are obviously not making roads to any yeah. belt, and that's what we want to see on three hundred, right? OMF, interesting. OMF fights. belt, oldest motherfucker. Yeah, that could be something. That could be. Uh, or just old motherfucker, because one of them's going to be older, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose then they just win. Yeah. Yeah, old motherfucker. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options out there. You have Miller. to bring your birth certificate to the weigh-ins, and then they just they just hold them up, <laughs> they reveal them. Fucking hell! I d- please don't give Jim Miller to Tony Ferguson. Oh yeah, please don't, don't like do that. that. People have been talking about that online. Um, don't, just don't. Why? What? Tell me why? Why are you even thinking about that? You disgusting fuck! <laughs> it's it's horrible. <laughs> I hate it. I do not want to see that. Ever. Jim Miller. The one person out there who's like been making the Tony versus Jim Miller tweets watching this like, oh, you. oh, okay. Honestly, screw that guy. I don't like you at all. And I like most people. Who, who's been saying that? I just saw comments on some posts. It was like, oh, yes, perfect fight. Tony Ferguson versus you Jim need to, Miller. You need to write down their handles next time so we, can, so we can call them out Maybe that's publicly. something we could do as a Publicly as a name and channel. shame them. Mm, name and shame like casuals, police. And we could even just reply to comments and have arguments with people in uh, Instagram uh, comment sections. Yeah, that'd be pretty. Maybe odd. not. No, no. Let's get. You know, let's let's start to let's get aggressive. Talk down, you know, talk down on these fucking <clears throat> idiots. That guy who said that, you you really ruined my day. Wherever you are, I hope you don't feel safe. I hope you feel horrible. No, I hope you're alright. But you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> Tony Ferguson does not need to fight anymore, let alone Jim Miller. Like, there's no Tony Ferguson should not be fighting. What do you see happening in that matchup? All. You see Jim Miller. He yeah. would knock the fuck out of him. He would beat Paddy Pimblett. Yeah? Jim Miller versus Paddy Pimblett at 300. Now, that would be a fucking good one. Uh, I just want to see him fight a fun fight. Paddy's not going to give him a fun fight. I suppose, yeah, well... <laughs> Paddy's a fun fighter. He's got I'm a, not his saying chin that. right I'm up in the I'm just saying, air. like, yeah, he does have his chin way up in the air. If we saw Jim knock the fuck out of Paddy, that would be very, very cool to see. I'd let him retire after that and everything. Yeah, I'd let him retire. I'd tell yeah. him he could retire. Um, <clears throat> honestly, that's what I want to see. Jim Miller, Paddy Pimblett on the, the prelims of UFC 300. Either that or Felder. Um, honestly, though, Paddy, for some reason, that, that fight just, like, clicks with me. I just have this hard on. He does. Yeah. Just and the mention confirm. of it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to personally say about, about him and um, his potential fights. Not anyone but Tony Ferguson, but ideally Paddy Pimblett or Paul Felder. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking Paul? I'd love, the, I'd love to see that Paul Felder fight. Um, just because I don't think Paul Felder realistically will just come back for anyone, you know? No. Um, it's like someone wanted him to come back and fight Shavkat. Um, yeah. He said in the in the post fight, and he's like, "What? Do you want me to fucking die?" Yeah. <laughs> um. And fair enough too. He probably would die. It wouldn't be good. <laughs> no. So Shavkat's a fucking. Yeah, brother. I think it is just it lines up perfectly. They're both. They both obviously want it. They're both on the older side. They're both on the older side. They're both not making any real, like they're not going to be fighting for the championship. They're not title again. contenders. No. They don't they don't really have title. They're not going to break into the top 15. No. They're not going to like they're not going to mess up any of your your up and coming people like Petty Pimblet potentially. You feed Petty Pimblet to Jim Miller and and buy a I don't know, some sort of miracle Jim Miller beats him. I think he would. You think he would, but by the way, you know, Petty Petty loses to Jim Miller. What do you do with Paddy Pimblett after that? Throw him away. Get rid of him. What you should have done a long time ago. No, I'm just kidding. But um, you hear what I'm I saying? Know. I just right? think it's fun. I think it's fun, and I think Paddy needs fun fights to try and win back the crowd. If Paddy can beat Jim, you know, and he needs challenges, he's an up and coming guy. Like, there's plenty of great challenges in that in that ten to fifteen realm of the lightweight division for Paddy to fight. What that he can beat? I'm not. I'm well. Bobby Green, I can see him. I can see him having some luck against Bobby Green. Do you think he's more likely to beat Bobby Green or Jim Miller? I think he's probably more likely to beat Jim Miller. 
then that's a good marketing point for the for the UFC. Because you're saying you don't want him to lose. I'm I'm not Give saying I don't want Petty to lose. I'm saying the UFC doesn't want Petty to lose. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. If you're the UFC, don't want him to lose. It's a winnable fight. He's a big name at the moment. He's, you know, 300, big card. I don't know. It seems like a good opportunity for to, to throw Patty in the mix. Maybe yeah, I th- I personally think we should give Jim Miller what Jim Miller wants. Yeah, he can do what he wants. I'm not um, telling him what to do. And yeah. I haven't heard him calling for Patty Pimblet. And I just think the UFC was smart. They wouldn't line that up. It's just my genius, my genius match. Oh, genius. obviously, you know, I see is. different things to others. I see brown when you might see black. Sounded a bit. It did sound a bit sus. I don't know what I was trying to say. But anyway, what should we do now? What, <laughs> what, should, what should we talk about? Um, right. um, do you want to bring the card the back the up? Card, eh? <laughs> We've got a few more fights to talk about. So, on that. Ricky Simon, Ricky Simone lost to Batista uh, in what was a, a very interesting fight, which we called. Just, we, just we quickly, that. mate, before we completely move on from G- Gabriel Benitez. We, we, we haven't oh, given we, him we didn't a, talk about him at all, did we? No, we didn't. He didn't do much, though. Well, he, he went in there and he traded, traded he some decent punches. Um, but it's win. quite obvious that he's not ready to have a step up in competition. No. He's also another guy who's getting on, 35 years old, um, with you know quite a few fights on his resume. He can fight Paddy Pim. <laughs> he can fight Paddy Pim. He can yeah, fight there Tony we go. Ferguson. There, well, there you go. There you go, mate. We've got, we've got that sussed. Uh, now you can, yeah, Ricky Simon. Ricky Simone versus Mario, Mario Batista. Uh, you called this one. Very good call. You called this exactly, I think. I did. Um, yeah, it was a banger. Uh, very, very interesting fight. Ricky Simone had his moments, but it was a pretty obvious win mm-hmm. for Batista. Um, yeah, but very, it was very good strike. What a brawl. Yeah. Um, and Ricky Simon, unfortunately, gassing out a little bit in the third round. Um, which really gave the opening for Mario Batista to he got show that off slam his... early in the third, which was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, but, but after that it was but great. after that it was just an absolute clinic in striking from Batista. Um, I didn't oh. know that Batista could have even lost that much weight after his stint in the in the WWE and all the movies <laughs> that he's done. Yeah, he's another guy who's uh, older. Yeah, <laughs> he's the, he's fifty three. No, so Former WWE Mario star. Batista, though, looking like, you know, quite a, a decent up-and-coming bantamweight. There Absolutely. Was, there was a good little string of uh, bantamweight fights on the prelims there as well, um, which we've said it so many times. What a fucking deep division. Man, yeah, crazy. Um, Batista fighting, I think, his first ranked opponent in Ricky yep. Simon. Uh, so he, we will see him. He'll be uh, top 13, he will be sitting. Yep. Uh, so very exciting. I think we jump him up to, you know, maybe that, that five to, uh, maybe top 10, top five to 10, seven to. Are you saying who he know, fights next? Rob Font is, he called out Rob Font. He called out Rob Font. Okay, cool. Yeah. I see, I see him probably being ranked either 13th or 14th. I don't know if the, the people will put him again, uh, above Umar just because of what, like, what he's been doing. But Ricky Simon is ranked 13. He is. So usually they replace the... We'll person. see what happens. We'll have to see what happens. Obviously, Umar's fighting soon as well. Uh, a lot of intrigue around that one. But I think for him fighting Rob Font, Rob Font's not booked. I think that's the per- it was the perfect call-out. It was. For him. It's he obviously gave it some one. thought. And I love Dominic when people Cruden. do that. Um, we saw, we saw a, a fighter on the undercard. Bisping gave him the perfect opportunity to say, you know, who he wanted and... Oh, this anyone was can good get last it. night, uh, yesterday. It was. But I hate when a fighter gets on the mic afterwards and goes, oh, yeah, I'll fight anyone who they put in front. Like, I don't want to hear that. No. Tell me who you want to fight. Tell me whose face you want to yeah. mash up. Sell the fight. Give me give me something to think about. Yeah. Like him saying Rob Font. It's like, yeah, okay, cool. And now I'm also, thinking about what could happen. It makes it so much easier for me to sit here on a Monday and go... Matchmake. Yeah, matchmake. Because I don't want to have to... You know, we send our opinions straight to Dana. Like, we've got a direct feed. He hasn't replied yet. No. And <laughs> he also hasn't given us 50 grand. Like, or what? how much did he give to the Nelk Boys? What for? He gave the Nelk Boys, like, 50 grand or 500k. For, for their what? birthday. For one of their birthdays. It's kind of fucking annoying because he can't pay his fighters and he pays the Nelk Boys who already make, like, millions and millions of dollars. He gave them. 
money. Dickhead. No, I'm just kidding, Dana. I love you. Um, <clears throat> reply to our texts. But don't talk shit about us in texts. Yeah. Which we'll talk about soon. We will. That was a good little, uh, good little one there. You just did, you smart man. So, can we both agree? No. Wait, what on? Rob Font. Oh, yeah, Rob Font. Yeah, that's a perfect matchup. And, I mean, I have a slight idea that Rob Font might be to the end of his tenure. Um, I think he's falling off a little bit. Slightly. Well, I mean, we see him ranked ninth there. Um, he's had, he's coming off two losses, is he not? He lost to Corey Sanhagen yeah. and yeah, he is. more recently Figgy. Correct. Um, yeah, he's lost so I think a guy from who's just come into the top 15, I don't know if he would take that fight, but I could be wrong. You know, you, you could see it announced next week. Um, and I would love to see it happen. But I'm just thinking, Rob Font, take that. Yeah, I'm sure he's looking to get back in there and, and prove that he's still got it. After two losses, though, you know, it, it makes sense that he fights down. So, you know, it seems like the perfect matchup. Hopefully he's he's keen. If not, you know, maybe someone like Dominic Cruz, if he wants to fight, Pedro Munoz. Or Ricky um, Simon. Ricky Simon. Simone. We should probably start saying that correctly. Ricky Simone. Ricky Simone. Uh, Ricky's got to fight down now. Uh, Chris Gutierrez. I think he already fought Chris Gutierrez. Ricky Simone. Who's he going to fight next, eh? Oh, they didn't even... Like... Still cool not name. typing, mate. For fuck's sake, yeah. Oh, there is. What the Ooh. fuck? Simonry. Simonry. I just got a little sneak peek into Kobe's... Uh, My search history. Search history, yeah. Pretty good, eh? So... Right. So he's, yeah, he's now, he, he fought Rob Font. He hasn't fought, um, he hasn't fought Chris Gutierrez, and I think that that would be a good next fight for him on a, a undercard or a prelims, uh, maybe on a fight night. Yep. I think that's a pretty obvious one. Um, he hasn't so, been very active lately either. That's something to note. No, no, he hasn't. Um, so, I mean, one fight last year, in which was a loss against Yedong Song. Um, so, yeah, Dong Song, Song Ye Dong, um, as you guys might know him as, but not me. Um, yeah, I think fighting down is is the best best idea. Chris Gutierrez might be a great matchup. So. Maybe even further down. Yeah, um, maybe outside someone. Top 15. Yeah, who's outside of the top fifteen, an up and comer, and give him a little boost back into that uh, back into that realm of ranked fighters. Shall we move on? Let's move on. Phil, Phil Wars. Wars. Um, he lost <coughs> to Waldo Cortez Acosta. No, he didn't. Uh, Mario he lost Batista's to... brother. <laughs> oh, wait, shit, sorry. Uh, Bruno Ferreira, who looked like a beast out there. Yeah. World beater. I really wanted that KO to happen in round two, because that's what I predicted. Yeah, I had him down for a first round submission. He did. Um, so a first round KO, I'll take it. Heavy handed, man. Not, and he doesn't, like the commentary was saying, he's not that big in stature. He, just, he doesn't look huge. No. Yet he is He puts it all together. Handed. He does. Um, he absolutely dominated Phil Hawes. He played with his food, and then he got the finish right at the end of round one. Phil Hawes going completely to sleep. Uh, yeah, that showing was, uh, that was chin a scary looking knockout. Average. Yeah, it was. Um, so Phil Hawes, unlucky, mate. Yeah. But for Bruno Ferreira, he's got to fight someone. He does. You're right. Uh, so in that middleweight division, I want to pop him into a top 15 fight, you know? I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Chris Curtis is booked. Yes, because I was going to say that. Paul Craig? Paul Craig could be good. Uh, coming off a pretty devastating loss to Brendan Allen. But Paul Craig, that could be an interesting fight for sure. I think that that's a very good call out, actually. Great jiu-jitsu, obviously, but, you know, we... we anyone too good at middleweight? Or winning against anyone too good. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a pretty perfect fight. He's not booked. And Paul Craig, another smaller guy. Mini man. Know, for the for the middleweight division. He is. So that might just be a nice a nice little matchup for Ferreira to kind of boost his stock um and and really cement himself into the rankings. Mm. Um anyone else there that you that you like? Maybe you, uh, is Jack Hansen booked? 
Uh, I don't think Jack Manson's booked. I don't think he's fought in a very long time. Actually. You can really put him up against anyone, and it's going to be a a good test. Yeah, he's a he's a pretty good uh, gatekeeper when it comes to the like top ten. Yeah, uh, he is booked though against Joe Pfeiffer. So <clears throat> unfortunately, yeah, he, he is booked. So it can't be him. Um, I'm I'm thinking that uh, I, I'm of maybe that could be a good test. I'm thinking Paul Craig's a pretty damn good suggestion yeah. there, Jackson, uh, and that's who he's going to fight next later this year. Book it, Dana. Book it, Dana. Get it done. Sean Shelby, call it. That's why we do these and release them on a Tuesday because we know that they're going into the war room on a Tuesday and they've got to book something and they've got to watch some guys, you know, tell them who to book. So they're watching us. Uh, we we know this. Um, it's a guess, but I'm pretty sure we're pretty confident. So. How many more times do you reckon we can, we can mention that? I think that's number that's, three. It'll be a running thing until Dana actually replies to us. Hmm. Daddy Dana, please help me. I'm a sick child. Please, sir, may I have some please, more? Please, sir, may I have some money? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the next fight down, the last... Phil Hawes. Oh, yeah, Phil Hawes. Um, He's got a go, blood. You reckon? Yeah. Well, he, his chin is suspect. Can you bring his record up? Like, his, on uh, Shredog? Billiam. So, Philliam Hawes, he <laughs> is no hype. No hype. He's right about yeah. that. Three He's KOs three. in a row. Oh, That's goodness. That's not good. And then another KO by Chris three Curtis. Three first round KOs in a row. I think he's got to start reconsidering some things. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest about it. I think that Phil Hawes has to start, has to have a long, hard think about if he, you know, if he's still got it and if he still wants to do it. Mm. That's just me personally. And it's obviously it's on him to make that decision. But you're right. I mean, and the other thing too, it does look like. He's fought once a year for the last three years. Correct, yeah. And yeah. they've all been KO losses. Is he just showing up for a paycheck? Hello? Quite possibly. And that's never a good thing, you know, if he, like like you say. And he's getting KO'd pretty viciously, which means he will have to take a bunch of time off now again. So it's like, I don't know. One, it's, it's not tough. good. For, he's 35 as well. Yeah, it's not good for whatever career you may have left. And two, it's not good for whatever you're going to have to be doing after your career. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, I think he's got to reconsider. He's a skilled guy, but it's, it, you know, the chin doesn't hold up. And if the chin doesn't hold up, you know, it's, it's often times to, time to reconsider some stuff, you know. Oh, definitely. Um, Go on, Philliam. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fair shout. It is. Um, this next one we already did kind of talk about a little bit at the start there. Yeah, we did. Um, we mentioned it. Arlovsky, it was, this was a shit fight. Like, this was a shit fight. It wasn't, it wasn't the greatest. I mean, for Waldo, um, Aria's brother, he really needed to go in there and make a statement. He should have um, done. That's what he, that's the platform he was given. Yeah. You know? And he, and he failed. Miserably. He went in there and he, and he swung for the hills, but just couldn't seem to find the mark. Um, and then kind of, kind of backed out of that game plan a little bit and then just kind of pointed his way to a victory. Mm. But even then, he looked like a dickhead doing it. Yeah. Um, he was acting like a complete prick uh, to Arlovsky, who's a legend of the sport, which is, you know, it's just not cool. Like it's like why? if I were to walk into a retirement home tomorrow, right, and then just start piecing up some old man and be like looking around the retirement home and being like, come on, guys, get into it. Yeah. You know, get into it. Yeah, exactly. What? It's like, bro, you've been given a really good opportunity to springboard your career off someone who's, you know, not at the top of his game anymore, but Obviously. he's still got a name. You could have got the KO and, you know, really done something with this, but, you know, you acted like a dick. You went to decision. It was actually kind of relatively even. Like, he obviously won, but it wasn't like he ran away with it. No. You know, Arlovsky was in the fight and he had nothing. So it's not a good sign, man. Um, yeah. This is one of those ones where Dana might cut someone after winning. You reckon? Nah, it's not going to happen. But I wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't make me upset if he did because that. Just, I'd like to see Dana's off. leaked text messages after this fight. Yeah, same. Love to see that. Pretty good. Eh? I'm all done on that. Same. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't even want to say who I want these guys to fight next. Arlovsky, retire. Or fight someone who they go to the the uh, retirement village and fight someone there. Like what I was just saying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, do that. Not, I'll be not there. One of those I'm guys on the out. undercard. 
Yeah, you can be on the undercard against another guy, from, a woman, <laughs> from the an old lady. Okay. Um, hey guys, thank you very much for watching this short episode of Combat Corner. If you like what you see, we've got lots of long form content below and lots of other videos like this. So feel free to go along and check it out. We really appreciate all your support. Thanks again for watching. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, comment, share it around. Have a good day. Peace.